Hey guys, still here and welcome back to Wargame Red Dragon. Today a bit of a bonus video. Um, this is going to be a very short one, but it could be um, an important one as it's gonna... Well, Rasman is gonna teach you, <laughs> in essence, how to potentially play around Delta, depending on your force composition. Highway to Seoul is a map that I usually go Foxtrot and then try to capture the buildings and then, especially since I'm usually playing motorized, I try to maneuver around here, try to maneuver around there and fight over Engulf and Charlie. What I mostly ignore slash neglect is the area here on the edge of Delta and the highway. The map is called Highway to Seoul. It kind of gives away the whole point of the map. Now, um, Razman, who you probably know, uh, if you not, then be sure to check out his channel, linked down below. Uh, he is playing with a deck that does particularly well on the highway in the force composition that he has. He has the OT-64C with Recon, SPW-80 with Infantry, and following up here, we have two M2 Wilks, which are pretty good tanks. 120 points, 17 frontal armor, 20 AP. Between the two of them, they can pretty quickly uh, demolish anything and everything that they come up against, of course, with the exception of a Super Heavy. Also there, BMP-1, SP-1s. These things have received a buff since the South Africa was introduced, and they have three frontal armor. Their gun, 9 rounds a minute rate of fire, um, don't fire it on the move because you might hit the moon, but you'll not hit your target. And overall, uh, a decent bit of HE, a decent bit of AP. They're okay. Now he's going to immediately proceed right into Delta. But whereas I would use the road here, he's going to immediately use the highway. Special and Yetnotki are spotting, and they are going to run into a fairly sizable resistance from Subway Samurai here. The game that I'm showing you here was taken from the tournament, Greyhound's Sensational Tournament. Now, his Pram S is providing smokescreen cover. And this is going to be significant, because you do not want your tanks out in the open, especially since his anti-air coverage is consisting of LSTR, which will never be able to intercept any kind of an aircraft. At the same time, Subway Samurai is also smoking. So if you look at it from Samurai, Subway Samurai's perspective, you can see some of his special Niyatnotki, Probably courtesy of the Huzaran over there. And you can see that he has something over here. In reverse, Razman can see transports over there, but not much else. Uh, he probably does know that his special knee are spotted. Especially considering that they will be getting shot at fairly soon. Now just note how much smoke there is being put up here. And it's mostly to cover the T2 Wilkes, or sorry, the M2 Wilkes. And the transports. Now, can Subway Samurai see the transports? Yes, because the Huzaran are there. He can also see that the infantry has disembarked, just standard Motorschützen. He cannot yet see the tanks, and the tanks are going to cause all sorts of mayhem. Now, there is a Milan 2 team in the way, there is a Leopard 2A4 from Subway Samurai. Razman currently cannot see as much as um, Subway Samurai can see from him, but we do know that there's transports over there, and at this point, the smoke screen that started out as this blob here has extended to cover the tree line here to provide cover, I suppose, to the Motorschützen. So he proceeds up. There's the Leopard 2A4. At maximum range, these things with their 20 frontal, or sorry, with their 20 AP can already damage the Leopard 2A4. But with the 21 AP of the Leopard, they can definitely damage the Wilkes a whole lot faster. But this Leopard has a 9 rounds a minute rate of fire, which starts to go down as soon as you start to take damage. The M2 Wilkes, between the two of them, have an 18 rounds a minute rate of fire, so that is more substantial. There's also, from the other side here, a bit of a rain coming down to immediately panic and cripple any kind of infantry that's in here. This is important because the infantry that are here are now shaken, worried, the transports are stunned, they won't do anything. At the same time, the infantry keeps moving up. They are still somewhat in the, the lower end of the highway, and because of that, the Huzaren have lost line of sight. So the Leopard 2A4 and L potentially comes forward to try and shoot them. I think he's still unaware of the event of the tanks happening here. So the Leopard 2A4 comes forward and takes a shot at the Motorschützen. Motorschützen with their RPG-7s can really not do that much. They have 14 AP, which means that yes, they'll always inflict one bit of damage against the tank, but beyond that, not much. 
So Raz is going to need his tanks over here. The M2 Wilks are going to have to move forward. But at the same time, the Motorschützen are threatening the position of the Husaren, which, as I can currently see, is the only reconnaissance infantry that Subway Samurai has. And now the tanks are getting involved. They're sitting here just on the edge of the smokescreen, so they can immediately dash back into cover if and when required. And um, if there is a helicopter or an HGM plane, that should allow both of these tanks to survive. The Leopard 2A4 NL has taken some damage. Um, on top of that, it has a stabilizer malfunction, which means it's not going to be firing on the move accurately, and it's being smoked up. Now, I'm not exactly sure who popped that smoke, but based on the attack that Rasman is doing, I suspect it's the smoke screen that... Oh, wow, it could have been put up by either way, either side. I just didn't catch that. Arguably, Rasman smoked up the Leopard, so he can take a couple of shots with the BMPs at the Grenadiers over there. And, of course, he can use the tanks, and he just keeps moving forward with said tanks. It's like a creeping smokescreen, and with that, the M2 Wilks are able to move forward. And this immediately pushes out the Leopard, it pushes out the Gepard, and that leaves the Grenadiers without any kind of fire support, except from AMX-13 FF-15s. Aside from that, the BMPs are capable of getting rid of these transports. There is yet another salvo of the RM-70 being fired. This time around, it's the position where I think he suspects the Leopard 2A4 is. And with that, Flak Panzer Gepard is panicked. The Leopard 2A4 NL is still okay. And currently the tanks, the Wilks, don't have to worry about the tank at all. And just like that, instead of pushing in from over here, Razman has effectively taken up almost the entirety of Delta and, of course, can start to reinforce that very quickly, either from here or from the highway, giving him a very important zone. And with this forest under control, uh, he's basically controlled the rest, as uh, the rest of the map as well, because he can potentially see most of the units as they're coming down here and transiting over to Charlie. And I think that that is also why Subway Samurai gave up or disconnected. I'm not exactly sure which one it is, but you're going to see him just surrender in about two seconds. Or at least the game's going to end in two seconds. But just this beautiful art of war with smoke screens, tanks moving up, fire support, and infantry being dropped off and basically grinding their way forward. This is what I wanted to highlight. Take note of the highway. It is not there just to rush from one side to the next. Uh, Razman has showed us this before in my tournament from about a year ago where they also had these beautiful maneuvers with smoke screens coming up on the highway, popping down back to the highway to, to use this cover, because it is lower ground. And that means that ATGMs, infantry, tanks, they just cannot shoot at you until they have an actual line of sight. All right, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you soon for more.